Welcome back everyone to part 11 in this series on creating scripted REST APIs in ServiceNow. In this video, I'd like to talk briefly about HTTP methods versus JavaScript methods. If you haven't looked at the previous videos in this series, take a look at them because in them we create a new scripted REST API in ServiceNow and we add to that API various resources for getting, deleting, posting, patching records in our vehicles table. But one of the questions you may be asking yourself is, well, why is the HTTP method important? Because after all, we're actually using JavaScript methods, in particular the Glide Record API, to perform database operations. That is the method, that's the tool that we're using to change records, create records, and so forth. So why do we need to select a HTTP method after all? Or HTTP is the protocol that's being used to exchange information between two different servers. And you need to make sure that the method that you're using for JavaScript aligns to what you have for HTTP. I mean, can you really put a glide record query inside a post HTTP method request? And can you put a glide record insert operation into a get method? Will that work? You could, but there are a lot of things wrong with that scenario. So yes, JavaScript is used to act or is interacting with the table, but the request itself is being transmitted by HTTP. So again, the client and the server are communicating over this protocol. Now, there are at least three reasons that I can think of why the method that you use for HTTP is important for your scripted REST APIs. Firstly, server responses are standardized and are based on the HTTP method. If you go to the documentation for this protocol, you'll see that certain error codes have been defined for different methods. And clients need and expect a standardized response to operations in order to understand what to do next. So for example, a HTTP code of 201 indicates that a record was successfully created. You wouldn't expect this code as a client if you were performing a delete operation. The second reason relates to item potency. Item potent methods refer to methods that when executed on the server result in the same state of the server every single time, no matter how many times I perform that operation. Take the get query, for example. If we don't make any changes to the table itself, we would expect that a get query with certain parameters will result in the same response every single time. And on the database side, there will be no change to those records at all. Why is this important? Well, if a communication error were to occur, how would the client respond? What is it supposed to do next? For a get operation and other item potent operations, it's actually safe to just wait a little bit and send the request again. Because again, it's not changing the state of the server. However, if we were performing a post operation and creating records on the server and a communication error occurred, what should we do then? Should we just assume that it didn't work and we just send the request again? that could actually result in duplicate records being created. We don't actually know what has happened on the server side. So these response codes are very important for the client to be able to determine what to do next. The third reason that HTTP methods are important for your scripted REST APIs is caching. With item potent methods and operations, you can perform them as much as you like, the state of the server will not change. And then this allows a server to take those requests and cache them because what is being returned by the server will be the same. So caching will actually speed up the response times of the server. So to summarize, don't mix up your JavaScript and ServiceNow glide record methods with inappropriate HTTP methods. Use the corresponding HTTP method for the chosen operation. Don't confuse the server. Don't confuse the client and your users. Stick to the standard. Stick to what they know and you can't go wrong.